Hey guys, Nate here with another data science interview question walkthrough. Today's question is from DoorDash. It's a food delivery company. And this interview question will test your ability to split data into percentiles using a window function. So I'll walk you through this interview just like how I would approach it if I were on an interview and give you tips along the way. All right, so if you like content like this, please subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, I'll see you at the other end of the transition. Thanks. This question is from DoorDash. It's a hard level question. The title of this question is called Lowest Revenue Generated Restaurants. The question reads, write a query that returns a list of the bottom 2% revenue generating restaurants. Return a list of restaurant IDs and their total revenue from when customers placed orders in May 2020. And then here are some assumptions you can use. You can calculate the total revenue by summing the order total column. And you should calculate the bottom 2% by partitioning the total revenue into evenly distributed buckets. Okay, I like this question a lot. This question is a common question that you would be asked um, as a data scientist working at a company. This question is also hard because you're trying to calculate the bottom 2%. So you need to turn the data into percentiles, find the bottom 2%. Um, it appears that you're going to need window functions to do something like this. So it is definitely one of the harder questions that you'd be asked on an interview, but it's a very common question. All right. So the first thing I want to do is talk about the framework in which I would approach this question. I approach interview questions and also questions on the job in the exact way every single time. It's a three step framework that I use. Um, to kind of just turn the entire approach into a system because in an interview, you know, I might be stressed out or nervous and might, I might not be thinking straight. And so this is a system and a framework that I use as a crutch in case I'm nervous and stressed out on an interview and I can't really think straight. So the first step is to understand your data. And what I'm trying to do is understand the columns that I need to use and the values within those columns. So I will know how to handle that data as I'm coding up the solution. So another thing that falls out of this is to understand the assumptions behind the data. And that's when you're having a conversation with your interviewer to understand all of the assumptions that are contained in this problem. Number two, Formulate your approach. What you want to do is write down the steps that you will need to take to build out your solution. And what's great about this is you don't need to code at all yet. What you need to do is just communicate with the interviewer, probably write down uh, each step just in a sentence about what you're going to do and then get your interviewer to basically approve your steps. Um, and so once you have the approval, um, you can start coding. But if there are any mistakes or logical flaws in your approach, the interviewer can point that out and you can fix it before you start coding. So the third step is to obviously write the code uh, to code up your solution. The way I do it is I build up my code in steps. Um, just like how I outlined it uh, in the previous step when, when I'm writing out the steps to my approach. And so I will just basically code up each step and each step really only has one or two logical statements in there. So they're very simple to follow. And my advice is as you're coding, just speak to the interviewer uh, to tell them what you're doing um, as you're coding and what functions you're using um, and why you're using those functions. Okay, so with that framework in mind, let's go and start solving this problem. All right, so the first step is to understand our data. All right, so the data schema is here. Typically on an interview, you'll get the data schema. So what I mean by that are the column headers. Um, you probably will not be able to see the underlying data, the values uh, that are placed in each column. Uh, but in order to get an understanding of that, what you can do is just ask the interviewer for some sample data. So what I'm trying to do right now is to understand uh, the columns that I need in the solution. So I know that the question is asking for the restaurant ID, the total revenue, and then limiting the data to May 2020. So let's try to find these three things, these three columns, all right? So the first one here is obviously restaurant ID. That's an easy one. In terms of total revenue, if you read this bottom paragraph here, you'll see that you can calculate the total revenue by summing the order co total column. So if we go down to the schema, we see the order total column here. 
And then if we take a look at the preview of this, of this table, the order total is here as well. And then lastly, we know we need to limit the data to May 2020, but there are four date columns here. So we need to pick one. So if we read the question more carefully, we see that we need to return a list of restaurant IDs and their total revenue from when customers placed an order. So the, the trick there is from when customers placed orders. All right, so right here, customer placed order date time. So that is probably the column that I'm gonna need to use in my solution. And so if I'm a little iffy about which column to use, all I really need to do is ask the interviewer, provide them with a reasoning why I think this is the right column to use, and he or she will tell me yes or no. And then lastly, an assumption that I can have as I'm looking at this data schema is order total, discount amount, tip amount, refund amount, right? So another thing that can concern me is, do I need to incorporate discount amount, tip amount, and refund amount in the order total, or can I just use order total as is, right? Because it would make complete business sense to calculate revenue by taking into account discounts, tips, and refunds, right? So I would ask the interviewer that. In this case, we are only going to use the order total column. So now that I know the three columns that I will be using for the solution, let's actually write out the steps to solve the problem. So this is step two in the framework. So the first step is to filter the data down to only using the May 2020 records. And we are gonna be using the customer placed order date time column for that filtering. I'm also gonna assume here that I don't necessarily need to cast this column into um, a date time data type because in this table right here, it's already in a date time data type. So we'll use the values as is. The second step is to calculate the revenue by summing up the order total column and then grouping by the restaurant ID. And so the next step is the hardest step. It's to find the percentiles by splitting the total order into even buckets. I'm going to be using the entail function to do this. And the reason why I want to use the entail function here is if we go back to the question, uh, at the bottom paragraph, it says, and you should calculate the bottom 2% by partitioning the total revenue into evenly distributed buckets. That's exactly what the entail function allows you to do. It allows you to evenly split up your data into however many buckets you want. And because we're trying to find the bottom 2%, so we want to split our data into 2% buckets, we're gonna have 50 of those buckets, right? 50 times 2% is 100%. And so that's how you split up your data into two percentile buckets. And then the last step is to isolate the 50th entile, so the bottom 2% of your data. Uh, using an outer query. And so what I mean by that is that the first three steps are actually going to be a subquery. And then in order to isolate the bottom 2%, I'm going to write an outer query that uses the information in that subquery. All right, so it'll be more obvious once I start writing the code. But this is basically the approach to the solution. So as I am writing this out and communicating this to the interviewer, the interviewer has a chance to interject and point out other assumptions that I may have missed. And so the purpose is really to lay out the right approach and to get it validated by the interviewer before you start writing code. All right, so let's say we've done that. Our logic is correct, our approach is correct. Let's start writing code. All right, so our first step is to filter the data to use only May 2020 using the customer placed order column. And so this is relatively simple. Again, we are going to be using the customer placed order date time column. Um, and all we're gonna do is just say it's between May 1st, 2020 to May 31st, 2020. And this between operator here is inclusive, meaning that it will include both May 1st and May 31st in the filters. The other way to do it is to use inequalities if you wanna do that. And another way to do it is to basically use inequalities that look like uh, this and this. But for simplicity, I like using the between operator because it's one word versus two inequality symbols. So if we run the code, let's see what we have. So this is our output here. 
We care about this customer placed order date time column. And we just wanna see whether or not all of the rows are in May of 2020. And as I go down, it does seem like all of the rows are in May 2020. So now the next step is to build on top of what I have written so far. The next step is to calculate the revenue by uh, summing the order total column and grouping by restaurant ID. So that's also relatively simple. We have restaurant ID here, and then we have the order total column that we're gonna be summing up. And so all we have to do is put the restaurant ID here, sum the order total column, and then obviously put a group by. So if we do that, we have restaurant ID and the total order or total revenue. Okay, so now for the hard part. Uh, the reason why this question is actually being asked on an interview and the technical concept that's being tested. Okay, so we need to find percentiles by splitting order total into even buckets using the entire 50 to give you 2% buckets. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to do is bucket this restaurant ID column here by the total order that I've calculated here. I want the buckets to be evenly distributed and in two percentile buckets. So I need 50 buckets so that each bucket represents 2%. All right, so that's why we are using the end tile function because end tile gives us even buckets, evenly distributed buckets. And that's the reason why I'm using the number 50 because it will divide the data up into 50 evenly distributed buckets, each bucket representing 2%. And to illustrate this further, what I have here is a graphic of how Entile works, all right? So in its simplest form here, uh, what I have on the left is basically how Entile works. Um, if I have 10 rows, so let's just call it 10 restaurant IDs, and I want five buckets, that would be Entile 5, right? It's basically splitting up the restaurant IDs into five different buckets here. And each bucket has two restaurant IDs. And you can correspond this bucket column here basically to the revenue or total order column that we just calculated. The one nuance of Entile is illustrated on the right here. Say that you have 10 restaurants or 10 rows in your data and you want to divide the 10 restaurants into three evenly distributed buckets. You can't really do that because 10 divided by three doesn't give you a whole number, right? So the way Entile works is it makes the first bucket bigger. That's all you really need to know. All right, so now let's implement the Entile function. This is going to be a window function. I'm gonna start out with the Entile function here uh, and say that I want 50 evenly distributed buckets over the window, which is going to be over the total order window here. So what I'm gonna do is basically um, over order by some order total, which is basically order total here, this, this column, this second column that I have here. So if I run this code, I'm gonna view the output in a separate bucket. I have the end tiles here now. I have my data bucketed into 50 buckets. All right, so here's the first one, second one. And if we look at these end tiles and compare it to total order or the total revenue, we see that end tile one is much lower in revenue than end tile 50, which is much higher in revenue. So in terms of finding the restaurants with the lowest revenue, we're gonna be needing to isolate end tile one here. This is the bottom 2%. So that would bring us to the next step, which is to isolate the 50th end tile using the outer query. All right, so um, there's a mistake here. It should actually be isolate the first end tile using an outer query because we're trying to find the lowest generating restaurants. Okay, so here's how I would implement that. Basically what I just wrote before is now a subquery right here. And then I want to isolate end tile one. So I'm writing this outer query that gives me restaurant ID and total order. And then it will just pick out end tile one, which is the first few rows here. So if I run the code here, what I get is essentially the restaurant ID and the total order that represents end tile equals one, which is the lowest generating restaurants which is also the bottom 2% of revenue. Okay, so now that we're done solving the question, a common question that an interviewer would ask after the solution is, 
is there a way to optimize your code? And oftentimes the code that you've written is not optimized because you probably wrote the code in such a way that it was really easy for you to communicate the logical steps with your interviewer, right? But it may not be completely optimized for runtime. So what the interviewer is testing you for is whether or not you know SQL theory. So a yes or no answer to whether or not a solution can be optimized isn't necessarily the right answer. So what you should do is definitely talk about any optimization optimizations that can take place. But if there are none, talk about other ways you can restructure your code. So when I look at this code here, we basically have a subquery. Having subqueries is computationally heavy because in order for you to execute this entire um, query here, you're really executing two queries, uh, the outer query and then the subquery here. So that's not necessarily what you wanna do because it takes a little bit longer to run through the entire code. Um, but I don't really see a way to optimize this. You basically need to have a second query to be able to pick out the entile equals one. But what you can do is instead of having a subquery, you can write a CTE, which stands for common table expression. So one way to rewrite the solution is to have a CTE that looks like this, right? So basically what we have is the CTE right here called bottom revenue. And then we are calling that CTE here in the second query. You still have two queries, right? You still have the CTE and then you still have this query right here that I am uh, highlighting. Uh, so it's gonna take probably just as long to execute and run through, but in terms of readability, it's a little bit easier to, to read a CTE instead of reading a subquery. And then another advantage here is that if you have a longer query, uh, you can just basically reuse uh, this CTE here. And so another advantage of using a CTE is that you can reuse that table or that CTE in other parts of your query. So this is a simple query here. It doesn't have many lines, but oftentimes you're writing longer queries on the job and you might want to reuse and recall um, the CTE. And so that's basically all I would actually say. There's no way to really optimize the solution, but there is a different way I could write it. Um, here's some information about CTEs that I know, and hopefully that's enough information for the interviewer to assess your knowledge of SQL theory. Okay, so that's it for me today. We're done with this data science interview question by DoorDash. It was a difficult problem because it used window functions and you needed to use the right function uh, and tile in this case to be able to find the bottom 2% revenue generating restaurants. If you like content like this, I have a lot of other walkthroughs for data science interview questions. So go ahead and check out that series that I have. It covers companies like DoorDash that we have here, but also Microsoft, Twitch, Facebook, and a lot of other of your favorite companies. All right, until next time, everyone.